Tom, again, thank you very much indeed for breaking into your afternoon uh, to, uh, to join us. Before we get into the macro New World Order or not, and I hope you heard what Christopher had to say, I was listening to you late last night and again first thing this morning. You are currently working with former colleagues, other former military types, uh, to try and make sure that none or very, very few are left behind in Afghanistan. Without breaching confidences or putting anyone at risk, can you give us a sit rep, an update? Well, look, I've been in touch uh, on a regular basis now for the best part of the last few weeks with various colleagues. And first of all, we were trying to get people into the airport. We were communicating with serving soldiers, obviously, who were on the ground. And now we're mostly dealing uh, with, a, a, if you like, a scratch 11 of retired, of retired officers and soldiers uh, to try and get people out. Um, I, I'm not going to go into details because I don't want to blow anybody's chances, but clearly what we're looking at is um, other routes out, whether that be land routes or alternative air options. Uh, it, it's, pretty, it's pretty tricky, frankly, um, but there is an extraordinarily impressive group of uh, people who are giving up an awful lot of their time to, because they feel, as I do, uh, a particular responsibility and connection to those we fought alongside. I respect that, and uh, it sounds optimistic, so we will keep our collective fingers uh, crossed, but also our, our, our lips sealed upon it, and uh, good hunting and, 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 and good luck with that. On the big question that you, you know that, that, that we wanted to talk about, do you think Afghanistan shows a global alliance and huge democracies and leaders taking their eye off the ball in Afghanistan, or does it tell us that things are shifting, not least in Washington? Look, I think, I think what it shows us is that we are, have forgotten the value of strategic patience. I mean, you don't need me to tell you because you saw it uh, in the Cold War for the last whatever it was, you know, 60, 70 years, that when we wait out the enemy, we achieve remarkable victories. Look, the victory in Germany, forgive me, there's a child shaking the desk. The, the victory in Germany uh, in uh, 1991 saw the liberation not just of East Germany, but also the whole of Eastern Europe, barely with a shot fired. And sadly, there were too many people killed on the border. Uh, when these German border guards murdered them. But but it was a remarkable victory, and a victory that wouldn't have been possible had we not had the absolute commitment to endure. And what I'm afraid Afghanistan shows is that without strategic patience, even a ragtag bunch of uh, sort of, you know, militias can give you a serious pounding. And I'm afraid that's what's happened. It's not that we were beaten militarily. It's not that uh, Afghanistan is the graveyard of empires. It's the bookend of empires because people forget about it, get bored and walk off. And I'm afraid that's what we've done. So it's not, I'm afraid the tragedy of it is, it, this isn't a military defeat. It's a political decision to walk away. Mm. What Christopher Mayer was just saying, and I, I'll repeat it in case you missed it, but also to remind folk at home of, of one of the key points that he said, was he celebrated, as a number of opinion pieces say today, the end of nation-building, the end of us glorious democracies seeking to impose our moral and political will on other sovereign states. Do you share his analysis? Do you applaud it? Well, I, I'm not sure it is nation building if what you're doing is you're trying to enable people to go to school. I mean, I, I don't think that's, you know, uh, I don't think that's very aspirational for a Westphalian democracy. I think, I, I think that's pretty basic um, to, to, to want to encourage people to go to school. Um, but look, I mean, there's, there's a, a huge failure in Afghanistan, clearly, and a, a major political failure. And I think it's a lot to do with the legitimacy of the Afghan government and the way in which it was supported. And, you know, this is a subject for a much longer conversation, Alistair, and I hope one that we'll have over a bottle of wine at some point. But the reality is that the, the, the failure in Afghanistan now sets back uh, the security and sovereignty of the United Kingdom because it encourages ungoverned areas to have, uh, you know, the option of an Islamic state type organisations. And we've seen it, you know, we've seen it now tragically in Kabul the other day. Uh, yesterday, sorry, forgive me, the days seem to blend into one. But it's also, we're seeing it in places like Mali and Nigeria and Libya, uh, you know, in, uh, and we saw it in Iraq and Syria. So, you know, this is, the, the, this is not simply something that's going to stay in one place and, and, and remain there. Final point, and I think I can hear a small Tugendhat in the background, and that's absolutely fine, but I just wanted Forget to explain it was in your bit yes. of a conversation, not, not as far as I know, not here. Um, the final point, and again, we've talked about this before, and you've written very eloquently about it, um, how China 
uh, sees the world, 21st century, uh, and your work on Huawei has been a classic example of it, but general infiltration through the industrial complex, through the intelligence network and what have you. In your view, are China and Putin's Russia, not the old Soviet Union of the Cold War, but Putin's Russia, looking at Afghanistan, the American response to it, and rubbing their hands? Well, they were. I mean, I think what they were looking for was a, a, a quick win. Guys, can you be quiet for a minute, please? Sorry. The, what they were looking for was a quick win, and they were looking for a win that would sort of tip, tip their uh, allies over the line. And instead of that, what they've got is an innings victory. Now, the problem they've got now is that means that their allies don't feel they need them as much. And because they don't feel they need them as much, uh, there's a danger that they'll start to look at them. This is a little bit like that old line about feeding the crocodile nearest the canoe in the hope that it will eat you last. Well, I'm afraid we're now out of the way and they're first in the queue. Absolutely uh, staggering reflection there. Uh, and thank you very much indeed. And, and also thank you for sharing with us a display of post-military and now political leadership by just nonchalantly turning off camera, addressing your children, and then turning back to me. Tom, great to see you. Uh, take care. Best to both of you and see you soon, I thank hope. You. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favorite shows, and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.